This is white ash. It's in the family Oleaceae, in the, in the genus Fraxinus, and the specific epithet is Americana. So white ash is Fraxinus Americana. And similar to the green ash and other native uh, North American ash, it is susceptible to the emerald ash borer, which is an invasive pest from Asia. EAB, as it's commonly known, only impacts, or primarily impacts, trees in the genus Fraxinus. So it's important to be able to identify true ash from things that maybe have ash in the common name but are not in the Fraxinus, Fraxinus genus. Let's take a closer look at some of the identifying characteristics. Looking at the bark of the white ash, it doesn't feel as regular to me as what I saw in the green ash, but it takes a while to, to really look at lots of different trees and their bark to be able to distinguish. It does have a grayer rather than a brown tone to it, and the ridges tend to come to a bit more of a point than what we saw in the green ash. first feature we can look at are these structures here. These are actually ash flowers. You won't see these year-round, and many times you might see them as these sort of black structures hanging throughout. This is something that's called flower ash gall. It impacts the appearance and the function of the flowers, but doesn't tend to harm the entire tree. Like the green ash, we see that these leaves and buds are oppositely arranged, meaning they're opposite each other on the twig. And also similar to the green ash, we see that the leaf is compound. And it is pinnately compound. So this entire structure is the leaf, and this is a leaflet. All of these little leaf blades are actually leaflets. So on this one we have two, four, six, seven. So now green ash and white ash can have similar number of leaflets, all depending. If we look at the leaf base of the petiole, we can see that it's got a little bit of a curve upward into almost a smile. Now some have said that Fraxinus Americana, Americans are always smiling, or depending upon how you feel about the state of things, we're frowning. Regardless, the base of the leaf has this indentation. And we can see that on the leaf scar itself, where it goes up on the edges. It's a little harder to see in a freshly pulled off leaf. So if we look at an older scar here, we can see up on the edges on either edge. And that can help you identify between green ash and white ash. Also, just looking at some of the other videos, We've looked at the twig in relation to maybe the thickness of your finger, and you can see that ash is a fairly stout twig, um, as you've seen some of the others. So make sure that as you're looking around at plants and trying to identify, you're taking note of the thickness of a twig. The buds, the terminal bud, you can see not quite as brown and a little more rounded. And same with the lateral buds. So a little squatter and rounded compared to the green ash. From a little bit further back, you can see that it's got a similar shape, although usually I think it has a fuller shape, maybe a nicer crown. Again, on the right-hand side of this, we see some missing branches, but that has more to do with those branches encountering too much shade from the green ash right next to it. The fall color of white ash tends to be purples and oranges where the fall color of the green ash would be mostly yellow.